Here I have the Jackery Explorer 240 and in today's video I will share a complete test and review of all of its features, its overall value and compare it to its bigger brother, the Jackery Explorer 290, which I'm a little surprised seems to be identical except for some cosmetic features and one major detail that I will share with you later in the video. So if you really want to know how this Jackery stacks up to the competition, be sure to watch the entire video. The name Jackery is synonymous with small off-grid devices and one of the reasons behind this claim to fame is that they have consistently produced dependable solar generators for over a decade with millions of happy campers but this Explorer 240 is starting to show its age at a time when many newer power stations have Bluetooth and updated screens. In the box, you get the Jackery Explorer 240 and you get a nice accessory bag with some stuff in it. This bag isn't super useful, but it does keep everything in a nice neat package. Inside the bag, you get a 12 volt car charging cable, which this is the longest 12 volt car charging cable that I've ever gotten with one of these power stations. So you could put this device somewhere in your vehicle that's not right next to the outlet and actually charge the Jackery with this cable. Also included is your standard wall charging cable. This thing will pump a continuous 60 watts into the Jackery. The last thing in the package is this document folder and inside the document folder you get a Jackery shaped owner's manual with some nice pictures and a lot of references to all of their other power stations and how long it takes in the charge and a lot of the features. I know you wouldn't buy a Jackery 240 for the owner's manual, but this is actually a really nice manual. It has a lot of information about all of the Jackeries and so, I feel like they put a lot of effort into this product. There are two sheets of stickers. I probably won't be putting these on anything that I own, but they're actually really nice stickers. So if you're into outdoor accessories, you might put one of these on your vehicle. Although I might be a little hesitant to put a sticker on my vehicle that says, hey, I probably have a solar panel and a power station inside. Come check me out. Really, there are two features I think Jackery should include if they decide to update this model. First, the world is shifting to USB-C as a standard interface for charging small electronics, and this thing doesn't support it. Additionally, some other brands have some AC inverters that are a little more forgiving to higher loads. So I've shared my two gripes about this system up front, but I'm not gonna give up on this Jackery so easily. Here are a few things I actually find useful. First, this power station is not too expensive. I have found it for around $200 with the highest price coming in at around 220 bucks. So it's affordable. In fact, check the links in the video description to find out the current price and updated features. Also, it performs according to its specifications. Nothing makes me happier than a device that actually does what it says it's going to do. When this inverter says it will sustain 200 watts continuously, it actually works. This 200 watt AC inverter will support spikes up to 400 watts, but only for a very short time. While I'm talking about the AC inverter, it's important to note that it only puts out 110 volts, which is what you would expect from 110 volt outlet, but usually a home wall outlet will give you 120 volts. So this might be important if you were trying to power a high precision device, but for my uses, this is not an issue. Now I'm going to run this my heat heater and see how long the Jackery 240 will run it for. Normally I don't run a heater like this on a small power station, but in this case, this my heat heater pulls around 200 watts, which is perfect to do a battery drainage test on the Jackery Explorer 240. So it actually did pretty good. I got 227 watt hours from the Jackery and it ran for an hour and 11 minutes. That's a really high battery conversion rate and I will put the percentage on the screen. Even though this is kind of old school, I love this display. No, it's not very complicated and the LCD looks like something you would find on a calculator from 1985, but it gives you the most relevant information for this system. It shows the input power, load power, and percentage battery remaining. It also shows a battery bar, but I prefer the percentage display. 
Now, this display does not show which device is on, but the power buttons have a little green light giving that information. So its design is efficient. What about the rest of these outlets? The USB-A panel puts out 12 watts total and has two outlets. For most of us, if you only want to charge a cell phone or maybe run some lighting, these USB ports are perfect. So no complaints here. And if you really want USB-C, the latest Jackery Explorer 300 has that feature. Now I'm gonna test the USB-A outlet to see if I can pull the 12 watts that it's rated at. To test the outlet, I'm gonna plug in this partially discharged anchor battery pack that can accept up to 30 watts of charging power. <laughs> That's super interesting. That anchor power core is pulling 22 watts from the Jackery that is only rated at 12 watts. It did pause at 15 watts for a second, but I'm really surprised that it made it to 22 watts. I'm not gonna lie, I am a little impressed with the Jackery's USB output power. This 12 volt DC outlet puts out a total of 120 watts, which is standard on most portable power stations. But this one is regulated, which is perfect for using all of the available power when needed. The input it accepts up to 60 watts it can be recharged by solar power wall outlet or your typical 12 volt car out with a solar panel or wall outlet you can get the full 60 watts but with a car charger it only takes 42 watts max while testing the charging capacity i noticed that with a 24 volt dc outlet i can pump 75 watts into this now i'm going to test the input using the car charger and the wall charger i'll start with the car charger and i'm going to use this 12 volt outlet on my blue eddy Plugging it in, it seemed to start up pretty quickly. Immediately we're getting the 42 watts into the device from the 12 volt car charging outlet. But I have a different outlet I wanna try. This outlet right here is a 24 volt DC outlet and I have noticed when I use this one, I get a higher input into this Jackery Explorer. So as you can see, this Explorer is currently getting about 75 watts into it, which is a little higher than I would have expected. How does that impact you? Probably not, but if you have a diesel engine vehicle, you might have a 12 volt receptacle and you might be able to get a little bit higher of a charge, being able to charge this quicker on the road. Now we're gonna see how much power we can get into the Explorer with the wall outlet. So it jumped straight up to 60, and this thing stays pretty much at 60 watts for the entire time that it's charging. The Explorer 240 has a battery capacity of 240 watt hours, which is also 16.8 amp hours at 14.4 volts. So in terms of the old lead acid batteries, six of these systems would replace one 100 amp hour lead acid battery, sort of. These lithium batteries can be fully discharged, but lead acid batteries don't last very long with lots of discharge cycles. I don't particularly like the lithium manganese cobalt oxide battery found in the Jackery, but this is the same chemistry found in the Tesla Powerwall. I have found that this chemistry does not last as long as lithium iron phosphate. It is more volatile as it ages. As you can see, this thing does not take up a lot of space and it only weighs in at 6.6 .6 pounds or three kilograms. But this brings me to the most interesting fact about the Explorer 240. It is the same exact size as the Explorer 290. The only real difference with these two devices is the battery capacity and of course its price. I recently picked up this Explorer 290 at a big box store and it matches the 240 in every way except battery capacity and branding. It even came with the same size box and the same exact accessories. But this 240 came with some awesome stickers. And of course, with a higher battery device, the Explorer 290 weighs in at 7.5 pounds, which is almost one pound heavier than the Explorer 240. Although I'm not sure that extra weight will improve the tone of my biceps when hauling this massive power station to my campsite. It is very important to keep all of this in perspective. You get the same features as the Explorer 290, but with a much lower price. So depending on your intended use, the 240 could be a much better deal. Let me know what you think about the value in the comments.